Okay, we're now live. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to our third um, live chat organized by ADAT. And um, this month, we're talking about African public art. Um, we've uh, put together a panel of um, individuals that are in engaged in uh, public arts um, activities. So I'm going to hand it over, hand over the discussion to Martina, and Martina is going to moderate our discussion. Um, but I guess before we begin, let's start with introductions. Um, so our panel consists of contemporary artists and community members who are really communicating their deepest thoughts, desires, and fears. Through street performances, public art, and festivals, the artists and the audience have become to merge as one to stimulate dialogue and conversation. So our panelists con consist of those in Africa and the U.S., and we can briefly, they can give brief introductions of themselves and maybe a current project that they're working on. Um, so we can start with Ryan Holmes, the community director of Mokata. Hello, world. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, my name is Ryan, and I am the community programming director at Mokata. For those who don't know, Mokata stands for the Museum of Contemporary African Diaspora and Arts, and we're located in Fort Greene, Brooklyn, New York. And um, my role there is to basically expand our mission of it being an accessible museum that celebrates uh, black contemporary art to neighborhoods um, that are surrounding our museum. So uh, most of the, the programming that I do exists outside of the gallery walls. Um, I just finished up one of our biggest programs of the year, Soul of Brooklyn Week 2013. It was our fourth annual, and now um, I'll go. I'll talk to you a little bit more about that as the panel goes on. Um, but I'm, you know, continue to work on Soul of Brooklyn programming, connecting local businesses to arts, um, and also a program called Public Exchange. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit more as well. I'm also the co-founder of a collective called Brooklyn Boyhood. And we are um, a collective whose mission is to empower queer and trans boys of color uh, and connect us throughout the world. Great, thank you. Um, so we can mm -hmm. move on to Nana, um, an African curator and art historian. And if you don't mind, maybe doing a brief introduction of yourself and a current project that you're working on. Okay, I am Hello? Yeah, I can't hear anyone. I think we should I I think we should move on. There's a problem with the uh, connection. Okay. Okay. Would you want to um, so, Go so we'll, move, we'll move on to our last panelist, um, Sergi Ant um, <laughs> a Ghanaian performance artist. Yeah, can you, can you say your name for us? Yeah, Sorry. Atikwe, Atikwe, yeah, my name is Serge Atikwe Kloti and I'm a visual artist in Ghana and well, I play with all the <laughs> mediums, you know, including performances, installation, and stage photography and you know, I'm all the way around, you know, I play with all the mediums. And I found an organization that works with children, especially street kids in my community and also found a performing arts group but it's very local based and you know we had a lot of street performers criticizing you know government, religion, environment and all that you know but currently I'm in a residency in Vienna right now and I'm looking forward yeah. to achieve yeah results within three months yeah oh great um, and Nana can you hear us? hello Hello. Yeah, I can hear so, you. The um, line's not um, great, but I um, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Hello. 
Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. So, um, you if you don't mind, maybe, yes, can you hear us? Hello? Yeah. Um, let's go on ahead with the questions uh, for the first section of the discussion. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so our, our yeah. go ahead. Oh, <laughs> um, our hour long um, discussion will be broken into three sections. Our first section is going to be mm -hmm. questions revolving around public art and its relationship with the community. The second section will be addressing the role of the artist within the community. In our last section, we'll deal with the art, the voice of the artist, so how a message is conveyed and received um, within the public. So I'll start the questions off um, and direct it to Ryan. I know that Mokada, you mentioned earlier, has a lot of several has several community-oriented events and programs within Brooklyn, mm -hmm. um, including Soul of Brooklyn. Kid Flicks, Film Festival, and Student Voices in Public Art. Mm -hmm. do, you do you mind explaining one of these programs or events um, for us? Sure. Could I cheat and do a real quick intro of all of our <laughs> yes. programs? Yes. Yeah, sure. um, I promise it won't take forever. So, uh, so Solar Brooklyn is one of the biggest programs that I organize, and that involves partnering um, arts organizations, or artists with local black businesses throughout different neighborhoods in Brooklyn. We do that in a lot of different forms. That happens through um, organizing events, like you mentioned, like film screenings, or um, hosting, you know, jazz concerts and coffee shops, or um, you know, just different, you know, different unique ways to kind of integrate arts um, into businesses to kind of just stimulate them. Um, since we're dealing with a lot of uh, gentrification and white folks. Um, kind of erasing black businesses in spaces that have historically existed for a long time. Um, so this is kind of our way to try and, uh, you know, tackle that while also engaging community with really dope programming um, that connects them directly to what we have going on at the museum. Because um, we try to tie all the themes in with the exhibitions. The other, one of the other programs is public exchange and we bring arts programming directly into public housing developments in Fort Greene. Um, we work really closely with the tenant associations and residents to do that. Kid Flix Film Festival is, 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 has existed for the past 14 years, and it's a film festival um, that shows films that portray black folks in a way that doesn't typically happen in mainstream media and tries to uh, sort of um, manipulate the, you know, the mixed messages that we get um, and portray us in a light that we deserve. Um, and that happens in Bed-Stuy. It's always a really amazing time. People have been bringing their kids and kind of grown up on that program. Um, and then, you know, we also have a ton of education programs like Artists in Schools, uh, where we have resident Mokata teaching artists work with, with students to uh, develop a show that happens every June. So that's a glimpse into what we do at Mokata to connect the community. Oh, wow. Um, so with these events that are, are in the community, how involved are community members in the preparation or even like the creation of these um, programs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, one of my favorite programs to help organize is public exchange. And that's the one that we do uh, in different house, housing developments. And all of the, the uh, developments that we work with are literally like 10 or 15 minutes away from the gallery. Um, walking, you know, so we're, we're close and um, Lori Cumbo developed this, she's a founder of Mokata to just kind of make a statement that though we exist um, in this like big Fort Greene cultural district that's sort of a more version of the neighborhood than it used to be in a lot of ways and um, that we're still accessible. So, you know, we work directly with tenant association members, residents to come up with ideas about things that they want to see happen. Um, in their neighborhoods, they, you know, if they decide that they want some kind of theater production, it's my job to, you know, bring them ideas or uh, connect them with folks that can help make that happen. Um, we just recently held garden parties, which was awesome. Uh, we brought in 
a lot of different artists to work with residents to um, to beautify the already amazing gardens, but to just add an element of public art to the space that everybody could participate in. And this was an idea that was developed directly from the gardeners that that you know um, have been planning there for years. So we make sure we don't just kind of come into a neighborhood and say we're going to do this because we feel like you want this. Um, we try our best to connect with community members and hear what they want um, and mm -hmm. what they feel like they need and you know that's the way that we move forward. Nice. Um, well, Sergi, as a performance artist, do you feel that there is a certain role as an artist in the community um, to really participate with members in the public that you live around? Yeah. Yeah, I think that, you know, I'm traditionally a painter, but the process of my sculptures as well becomes a performance and you know I live in a very very undeveloped place in Ghana and people are very we live next to a very huge gallery where people don't have access to the gallery because they think that the gallery needs people to buy the artwork so people usually don't go to the gallery People visited, mm -hmm. visitors are all from different parts of the world and not especially not the locals. So mm -hmm. I think that I use the performances as a tool to engage the relationship between the gallery and the people. So the performance is actually what enlightens the idea of artists more performing on public space than to be in the gallery. You know, so I use the performance to engage audience and also put that um, involve them into participation. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. So I think I think that public art engage a lot of interest because it has a lot of direct interaction with people and people find it very excited and yeah. So mm -hmm. I mainly use performances as the process of my creating my work and addressing issues directly to the public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do you feel that the work that you create and put in public places may be different from, say, a government-funded uh, monument like the Kwame Kumar Memorial um, Park? Yeah, I think that I display, you know, with the Kwame Kumar Memorial Park, it's mainly more like a tourist zone for people mm -hmm. to go and spend nice time in there. But most of my sculptures I display and it can easily be moved around different parts of the city. Yeah, so then people feel very direct, that they can have a direct approach to the sculptures, you know, because I, I use recycling. I found, mat found materials in the environment that is what creates my work. So I want people to have a feel of what it takes to use materials in creating an object, creating an mm -hmm. art piece. Yeah, so I prefer to display my work in spaces where people can easily walk through, people can have interactions, mm -hmm. than to be in a governmental zone where it's more very private. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, but going back to Ryan, you mentioned that Solar Brooklyn Week this year is the first, the fourth year. Mm -hmm. um, how have the communities reacted, or the reaction or involvement changed throughout mm -hmm. um, the years um, since its creation? Well, this was my first year uh, okay. developing the program, um, but I could definitely speak to. Um, sort of, I guess, what, what I felt like some of the like immediate results were or something like that. Um, but it was it was received really well. I think one of the most, um, I think one of the dopest parts about the whole thing was just um, kind of realizing that we can kind of meld together all these amazing aspects of the things that we do um, to help and support each other um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the venues that we work with, all of the, the businesses that we work with were black owned. Um, we're connecting with artists and arts organizations that they may not have known existed. 
um, mm -hmm. and they were right there in the same borough. So it was just really dope. Like um, one of my favorite events was just uh, one where we had the Jeff King Jazz Band perform um, in this place called Bed Vine Brew, and you know the history of jazz in Brooklyn is just it's amazing, like the legends that have come out of, you know, places that people don't even recognize, they walk by every day, um, and there's a lot of, you know, elders, young folks that are still inspired in, in doing this music, so, you know, they felt, they were really happy that we were um, kind of trying to bring this to a, a crowd that was really diverse and, and sort of like, you know, keep jazz, you know, try to help to contribute to keeping jazz alive here in the borough, but... Um, mm -hmm. The business owners, they just, they loved it. Like they said that they were going to have a, a, a jazz night every Monday or something like that just to kind of oh, keep that fine. spirit going. But, you know, it's just important for us to just, you know, continue to have a presence um, as folks of, of the diaspora, as, as our neighborhoods are changing, as, you know, we're continuing to survive mm -hmm. out here. Um, it's important for us to gather. It's important for us to celebrate um, and just... You know, like I said, connect all these amazing parts of ourselves. So, you know, the reaction over the entire week was just love. Um, it was beautiful people and beautiful spaces, um, and you know, I can't I can't even express anything past that. Um, <laughs> but it, it was a really amazing experience. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, well, I know this weekend there's actually a big art festival in Accra, Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, that I've been seeing on my Facebook and Instagram pictures of the crazy, fun, and exciting times they look like they're having. Um, Sergio, I know that in the past you've worked mm -hmm. with this project. Can you tell us a little bit about what they're doing and how they're interacting with the community? Yeah, um, Chalote Street Arts Festival started three years ago and it engaged a lot of local artists and international artists to participate and give them the platform to share their experience and make intervention in that very space. So mm -hmm. I think Chalawati has engaged a lot of artists to collaborate with other artists and develop concepts and it, it's very broad and I think it gives and also my first year with Chalawati was very broad because I I was able to exhibit my sculptures that has been rejected several times with the galleries here and with Chalewati I'm able to exhibit my works and have a very good response and since then mm -hmm. my work has been, been around different parts of the world. And so I think Chalewati gives young artists the platform to, to explore their level of thinking because galleries are very selective and you know so mm -hmm. Chalawati is, is kind of a very massive platform to show your creative ideas and explore. And so I think Chalawati has been a lot of good platform for visual artists here in Ghana, including poets and uh, artistic backgrounds. Yeah. Hello? Okay, well, it's, hello? it seems yeah. that... Fest hello? Yeah. Hello? It seems yeah. like both of you guys are mentioning that festivals and community projects are a way for artists to really show their talent and skills in a much broader sense than it would be in a museum or a closed-in institution. So maybe this is a good point to move into our second section on the role of the artist within the community. Um, is Nana with us? Can she hear us? Uh, it's, it looks like she still can't hear us. So I'll, I'll adjust this back to Sergi. I have a quote that, that you had online, and I'll read it to you. Yeah. It said, people think pieces of art consist of objects that have to be displayed indoors. But for me, being an artist is a form of giving information or sending in information across. Art can make a lot of impact. Artists, therefore, play a very important role in society. What do you believe your role as a Ghanaian artist 
um, working in Ghana as well as out of Ghana. What do you do? You think your role changes depending on your location or your community? Well, I think I think that I was inspired by my community where I grew up, and you know, I, you know, I so as I said earlier on, I'm traditionally a painter. I studied mm -hmm. painting, but I finally became a self sculptor or installation artist and all that. So my when I started with my installation and sculpture. I've been rejected. My work has been rejected several times in galleries and all that, you know. So I, well, I studied art in Brazil. So when I came back, I developed a very new interest to approach art using recycling materials and plastic as well. So I'm working with that idea, my work is never accepted in in any exhibition space or any galleries. And so it was a very huge challenge for me to actually develop this concept of accepting, like elaborating on climate change, which is mainly my mm. subject for working. And so I go around communities collecting materials that objects that society left behind. And I realized that all those materials are consumption from different parts of the world. Which so I mainly work with plastic and plastic people find it very very weird to have a plastic sculpture in their room. So actually <laughs> I found out that, you know, and I still want to instill their their interest. So I keep I kept on working with the plastic, making plastic objects, plastic toys and all that, and still people don't respond. So I try to also use climate change as an awareness to scare people and win the observation. So I mainly work with plastic, and I think that based on that, I'm mm -hmm. able to interact with people how our thing is tied to tied to environment. Mm -hmm. People are trying to recycling, and companies are doing possible means. And as an artist, I believe that I can also use plastic as my main materials because plastic can stand all the weather conditions. So. I focus more on plastic and I now have a performing group and from people from different artistic background, people with different career background who is working together on plastic materials. So we go around asking people to just donate their plastic object that they don't use and you know, so we create sculptures that address the issues of climate change mm -hmm. and consumption in Ghana. So that is how my work came about and now we've I've involved a lot of people in the community to participate in this performance. Like we we choose each subject or is, uh, issues that people hardly speak out in public, and it's it's very sad for people to go through all this suffering and all that. So I use my work and I use people who are interested in art to carry on as, as a performing group to criticize this state, you know, and speak out our mind in public spaces. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that is how my work came about in, you know, making an impact in the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you ever um, surprised by the reaction you get from those who maybe watch a performance art or see a sculpture made of plastic? Well, are there are there reactions as well, ever been yeah yeah when I, I started mainly I work with these plastic jars you know plastic jars imported material I, it comes to this country as oil cans and after people use them as water storage so those are the materials that I use in my work and when I started people thought I was actually you know, wasting those materials, but I collect them from the garbage, from the environment. You know, people use them and just discarded them around. So I collect those materials and transform them into sculptures. So from the beginning, I have issues with people thinking that I'm just wasting those materials. You know, so mm -hmm. I had issues with starting cutting all those and probably because I need to also approach people and buy the broken down broken plastic jugs directly from them, you know, so I need to just have a conversation or just give them a brief about the idea of using the plastic in creating art pieces. So mm -hmm. I think it's very challenging and 
recently I had a performance about the independence in Ghana and how we are still suffering under this water stress in Ghana. So I collected posters on all political parties that is being you know dumped somewhere in the environment. So I collect them. I make a very huge costumes out of it and. Just in the middle of the street, I have this performing group that imitates each presidential candidate. So it's just the idea of pointing out or enlightening the relationship between the youth and the politicians. So we came about the street performance, and people thought I was actually paid for to do such performance. Mm -hmm. Also, people were criticizing that I was actually campaigning for the sitting president, you know, and. Unfortunately, um, the performance was covered by one of the TV stations here, and it was on TV about youth and politics. And people just approached me directly, and like, "Wow, this is what art means in these recent times." So I think that performances also give a wide audience and interact with people very directly. So yeah, so I've had issues dealing with that political performance, and I, I also. So that after the performance, I had a very, you know, platform to talk about this, how how arts can can change society, how arts can develop people and level of thinking, and because people think that arts should be artists should be just a painter, and you know, that the art is far beyond that. So, in the name of contemporary art, we feel comfortable to express ourselves using. Every material or any develop any concept, and no, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that you have conversations with those who encounter your work. Because uh, I have another quote by Ryan that she said in an interview, and it said, "It's great to connect on that level with local residency, residents and let the people in the community know that we are them and they that everyone." who's been here historically has been a part of what we're developing. So why do you feel that it's important for the community to feel this connection or shared interest that institutions like Mokata and local businesses have with them? Mm. <clears throat> I mean, I think it's it's essentially like what it's what we deserve. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's it's you know, um, it's kind of hard to feel rooted sometimes in environments like this when you don't know when or if you know uh, different things that are happening in your neighborhood are signals that you might not be able to afford rent in another year. Or your mm -hmm. landlord is going to sell your building, or you know these projects are going to become a co-op or whatever other type bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I guess I don't know. It's like I said. I just think it's there's some there's a lot of value in um, us just trying to like organize organize among ourselves um, and make sure that we are still uh, you know present and feeling like that we can actually um, combat some of this stuff because it's, it starts feeling enormous and this these institutions just um, are coming at folks from every angle because like. Gentrification isn't just annoying. It doesn't just mean like a coffee shop is coming popping up here and there. It's like mm -hmm. that means it's going to be more NYPD on the block. That means that more black men and more black trans men or whatever are going to be um, targeted and you know harassed or or put in jail or whatever. So it's I don't know these these issues are um, just all kind of linked with each other and um, making sure that we are just um, kind of in it together is is just important. I feel. Um, mm -hmm. I can't even remember your your original question. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> but I you, hope that um, yeah. <laughs> you definitely um, spoke to it. Um, so with this connection or conversation that you guys are having with the public, do you feel that Mokata is seeing an increase of foot traffic coming in to the museum with locals? <laughs> who may have not known about the museum are introduced to it in events like Silla Brooklyn and then they mm. decide to take, check the museum out for themselves? Uh, I Let me be 100% honest. <laughs> um, not, <laughs> yeah. not nearly as much as we'd like. Okay. Um, 
we see a ton of people like for our exhibition openings. Um, mm -hmm. There's a bit of a party involved that may have okay. something to do with it. But um, <laughs> you know, we we just it'd be nice to like. Um, our goal is for like people to to kind of make this a place that they can feel like it's part of community, like um, where you can feel like you can regularly stop in or check into or um, feel like it's something that you can connect to or explore. Um, so we haven't really gotten there yet. Like we, the most most of mm -hmm. our foot traffic comes from, like I said, exhibition openings or like school tours. We do tours with senior citizens. Mm -hmm. We do you know different things like that, but. Um, mm -hmm. On an everyday on an everyday basis, you know, it's hard to get people to kind of engage with us in that way, um, which mm -hmm. is exactly what we're trying to accomplish, right? Um, on a larger scale, and I mean, this doesn't just mean like, um, you know, a certain type of folks. Like, we want kind of everybody to feel like they can connect, um, you know, to mm -hmm. what we have going on in the museum. And when I say everybody, I mean I mean everybody, but specifically um, people of the diaspora um, that, you know, can know that this is an institution that's created by us, mm -hmm. legit for us, um, and in a way that we hope to kind of bring up issues that affect us. Like, we try to explore social and political issues. Um, we try to have, you know, controver controversy even, uh, just so that we can kind of spark dialogue around things that we feel like... Um, you know, or on the forefront of a lot of the things that we're struggling with as a people and, you know, places that we find power too. Because, um, it's a, again, it's about celebrating our art and who we are. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So this question could be for either one of you guys. Um, since you both have experience in community projects, what do you think makes a good or successful community project? So once a project exhibit program is finished, how do you guys still engage with that community? Yeah, I think I think that we still invite invite interested people to just carry on with whatever they've experienced within that project. And also what I do is after a community project I just invite people to, to my studio, you know, to to start their own creative process, you know, so so that they can carry on to other community that will be interested in, you know. So actually, I always find a way to to invite people after a project to carry on that idea into different communities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how does Mokata um, kind of maintain this partnership that they create or establish during like Soul of Brooklyn and other mm -hmm. things with the local businesses? Um, well, a lot, you know, uh, a lot of that is my job, I guess, to, you know, do that. And honestly, the way that I do that is um, partly, luckily, naturally. <laughs> There's a lot of work <laughs> together. But... Um, <laughs> You know, I'm. I tend to be extroverted a bit, <laughs> and I, you know, if I if I go into a space and I feel like it's important to connect with people, that's something that's a priority for me. But um, a lot of the ways is that I, you know, I try to frequent these places. Um, okay. You know, I make sure that I I know what's going on. I support um, other people's events. Like as a, as an institution, we support a lot of folks' uh, events, whether it be we promote or show up. Um, so mm -hmm. just, I mean, it's, it's weird cause we're all, we're all also community members. Um, so it's kind of like we're maintaining these relationships with intention. Um, but it's nothing that's like not organic, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you know what I mean? Like we try to, right. uh, foster relationships that, that grow and develop over time. Um, and you know, like we may work with the place a couple times and, and, you know, a year later, partner with them on a greater scale. We always try to, you know, um, figure out ways to connect um, mm -hmm. and make sure that we're, you know, continuing to, to, to build with each other. But I don't know if there's like a – and I don't know, like, they kind of laugh at me at the office because my meetings on a day-to-day -day are like the craziest mix and blend <laughs> you could ever imagine. <laughs> um, 
whether it be like artists, you know, I got to talk to Shabazz Palaces on the phone and then I got to ride over to Walt Whitman because uh, Miss Andrews doesn't know how to use her fax machine and she needs me to sign this paper real quick, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's just right. like, you know, just trying to like, um, mm -hmm. just come at people and be as real as possible and bring, you know, um, you know, not kind of give people crazy expectations about how we can support, but really just extend ourselves in every way we can. Um, whether it be sharing resources or, you know, producing programming or, you know, riding my bike in mm -hmm. two miles to, for this sweet old lady to sign this paper. So it's, you know, it's it's really just um, mostly just, it's, it's been a really organic process thus far. Okay. That sounds really interesting, both of you guys' responses. Um, we can move into the third section, the voice of the artist. So really kind of seeing the messages behind different works of art and how you as an artist or you as a community leader or member convey this message and how it's received as well. Um, so Sergi, you mentioned that you use a lot of found material and to address issues of environmental and political issues in Ghana. And you mentioned how responses sometimes are could be positive and negative. Yeah. Um, from these responses, do you uh, do you listen to them and maybe change how you perform or use them, or is it kind of you are you know what you want to say and you continue to say it until they get it? Well, yeah. What I think some of the response, the positive response is. You know, I just begin to understand that this message actually going directly to them. So what I do is I still keep on making such statements mm -hmm. till they accept that this is what I'm actually looking for. You know, so like I said, I did a performance on on sea pollution in Jamestown in the fishing harbor, and I, I engaged the fish folks to be part of it. So what we did, I asked them about how. The, the garbage that people dump in the ocean affects their occupation as fishermen. And there were a lot of um, topics that they were talking about. And I think that, okay, this is actually a point for me to chip in that idea of sea pollution by working with broken fishing nets and collecting garbage or waste product that has been dumped in the ocean. And, I use what I do is I collected like product that is being important and being produced here in Ghana. So it also came as as an, a huge installation that criticized the company here and the government that import all those products. So the fishermen also gain to learn something from materials that are being that are being surrendered by them that cause this sea pollution. So I think that mm -hmm. some of the negative also inspired me to to create um develop another form of um displaying or engaging them in this this process of creating that work. So I think all those comments are very important for me to know how to deal with or addressing the issue directly to them and even to the entire local people. Okay. Um, I know that you yeah. have mentioned as well that you travel a lot, or you, you're currently um, traveling and have been in Brazil working and doing your art. Yeah. Do you think your travels have kind of shaped the stories that you tell through your art? Yeah, yes, I, I, I may say, because when I, I, I actually study painting. So when I went to Brazil, I had a platform to, to collaborate with artists, local artists there. And Brazil, for me, it's, they are very curious about space and um, a lot of street performance. So I was inspired mm -hmm. by some of the art, local artists there. And I came back to Ghana and I started seeing how I can, I can promote that street performance in my work. So I think most of the trees around has been part of my creating my work because I, last year I was in Holland, a collaborative project with Dutch artists and 
we are to to work on the theme the, about the relationship between Ghana and Netherlands in history. So I think that also mm -hmm. develop my work by using archival materials and using history as part of my work. So I think all this experience traveling around has a lot of impact in my work because I don't now see myself as a Ghanaian artist or an African artist, but I think wider, mm -hmm. you know, and also collaborative projects as as actually make who I am, if I may say, because I've worked with international artists who has a very different artistic understanding. Mm -hmm. They coming together to create a piece or having a discussion of how to go about certain projects, I think it's has gained a lot of impact in my work. Okay. And I know that the yeah. Foundation for Contemporary Art in Ghana, you also do work with them, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a member of this Foundation for Contemporary Art and it's actually a platform for artists to collaborate with institutions in different parts of the world. And last year I was part of a global critique which I've never been experiencing that global critique about my work. I always feel comfortable with creating my work and doesn't care who who criticizes it. But this is the situation where we is invited, we are um, the Foundation for Contemporary Arts invite art professors and art critics from mm -hmm. the States to come to Ghana to criticize on each individual's work. So I think that it's also impact or I, I learned so much of how to read meanings into my work, even using materials and how materials influence my work and reading deep meaning mm -hmm. into, into my work. So I think that institution here, working with an art institution also give you the platform to think globally and also art locally, if I may say. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. And maybe our concluding question for both of you guys, um, since we have touched on the word collaboration and collective engagement a lot through this discussion, um, and with what you just said about networks of artists and art critics, um, the, this collaboration within with artists as well as communities, do you feel like this is an essential part or need or necessity for an artist or a community to grow this kind of collaboration, this um, discussion between one another? Yeah, I think I think I think yes. For either one. <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 it's very important to, to collaborate with the artists because I, what I've realized here is that artists here are very scared to collaborate with other artists because they think they might steal their ideas and, you know, and I think artists can never grow without collaboration mm -hmm. because I've collaborated with people, some people that I don't even know. I met in Ghana from different parts of the world. Like I'm, I'm in Austria right now. I did a collaboration with an Austria theater artist in Ghana and finally I'm able to meet him here in Austria. So I think with collaborating with other artists give you another sense of 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 developing you know different body of work altogether. So I I've, I've been trying to collaborate with photographers here in Ghana and other poets and all that, you know, so I'm trying to engage them in this public performances. So collaboration actually is part of what forms my work because I, I feel that working by myself is always just what I think, but collaborating with other artists also give a very wider experience and I think that is very important to collaborate. Actually I've been collaborating with a lot of local artists here because they, they don't get access to to international artists and you know so I always share my experience after I get back from residencies and I think it's it's also helping them to I think mature in their work and experiment in different forms of art. Um, <clears throat> yeah. For as far as uh um the importance of, for me for like that I feel I think for artists to connect with community um, has a lot to do with 
the fact that artists are have you know always been and are like um, a lot of times messengers in a particular way. Um, to me, I feel like um, especially when things are translating things that are connected to other things, <laughs> as far as like you know wanting to bring up issues around. Um, like anything that black folks are struggling with in particular or uh, whether it be through a film screening like someone um, literally like telling their own story um, we had a an event like early this year um, for one of our public exchange programs where we showed Middle of Nowhere which is a film by Ava DuVernay who um, I think she was the first African-American director to win Sundance but um, the, the film was so important because it was about a woman who um, whose husband had gone to prison and it was it was showing like uh, kind of her her experience on the other side of the fence and for that perspective to be coming from another from a black woman who's like um, you know it's, it's coming from her gaze I felt like it reached people in a particular way uh, where they were able to really connect with the issue if they were going through that or whatever else um, and then we were able to start dialogue, you know, with another organization called Center for New Leadership, which is like the only organization of its kind, uh, because it's it's run by formerly incarcerated um, folks only, and they, you know, do a lot of advocacy work, and um, you know, they also have direct services that help people in that situation. So we were able to like literally go from you know showing this piece to people feeling something, talking about it. And then uh, figuring out ways to answer mm. problems, or you know, tackle issues, or at least find help. You know what I mean? So, um, mm -hmm. you know, that that dialogue wouldn't happen if she didn't make that film, <laughs> right? And, you right. know, we didn't set it up to happen. Uh, and it was cool because, because like I said, public exchange program it happens directly in the projects. So the community at large, if they want to come to it, have to come into the projects and see it mm. and dispel whatever you know, whatever, like, misconception they have about folks that live there or whatever, um, you know, so it kind of, it also, like, redefined that space in itself, so to be able to, for something that powerful to just happen, um, you know, is really just connected to the art, and that, you know, that's film, but these things can happen through visual art, photography, uh, performative art, music, you know what I mean, so it's mm -hmm. just... It's just something that's like inextricably linked, and it has been for our people for for forever. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and it's also important for artists. I feel like to, um, you know, they want people to know, <laughs> they want people to see it, to hear it. They have something to say a lot of the time. Right. So. Well, thank you, both of you guys, for this really dynamic talk and discussion. Um, it was too bad we couldn't get our two pan our two other panelists on the chat, but I'm sure they would have had some really interesting interesting things to say as well. Same time um, tomorrow. Before we wrap this up, time, same place. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are down, we could do that. <laughs> um, but I do want everyone that's tuning in to go to ADOT's Facebook page, website, Instagram, Tumblr. Twitter, we want to be connected with our community as well and have a mm -hmm. strong um, social presence as well. Um, and we do have a few images on our um, album for this panel to see festivals that are going on in Africa and to see some performance artists and the works that are going on um, in the U.S. as well as in Africa. But before we close, I know that Sharon had a few things to mention to everyone. Thank you, Martina. I um, just wanted to add that we also have worked with uh, Fest Gurus. Um, for those of you who don't know, Fest Gurus is a, um, a collaboration um, by two individuals specifically that are traveling throughout um, um, Africa to visit some of the festivals. Um, so they're trying to provide a platform for people to get a better understanding of uh, the festivals that are going on um, in Africa at, the time, at this time. Um, so we got them to write a few articles. Um, they wrote their top picks for African festivals right now, and they also wrote on uh, public art in Zambia. Um, so there are a couple. Of, there's also some resources on uh, if you want to learn more about African festivals. Um, so if you go right to our website on our homepage, there are going to be some articles there that you can check out. Okay. 
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And hopefully, you guys check out um, Solo Brooklyn and all the work that Sergi's doing. And also, like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for meeting everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.